Hi YouTube, I'm Alden Peters, a filmmaker and VFX artist. My class on Skillshare just launched. It's about using Blender to add VFX to your films. And guess what? Today, I'm sharing an exclusive sneak peek with you. In this lesson, I'm gonna show you how you can do some 3D object tracking in Blender, a free open source software. So let's get started. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is take your shot and export it as a PNG image sequence because Blender handles image sequences much better than it handles footage. So open up Blender. We can delete everything here in our project. Click on the plus up here because we are gonna go to VFX motion tracking. And this is gonna open a new window with a few other tools uh, available to us. First, let's import our shot. So click open and then navigate to where you had your image sequence saved. Also, don't forget to save your project. Now that we have our footage imported, click Set Scene Frames, and this is gonna trim your Blender timeline to the amount of frames that you have in your footage. We can also go double check in here, uh, change this from 24 to 2398, if that's um, the frame rate that you shot your footage in. Then we can click Prefetch. This is gonna add sort of like a cache to our shot so that we can play through at real time. And this is what that footage looks like. Before we put any of our track markers on our shot, go to the track tab here on the right. Under objects, there will be a camera in there. By default, Blender is set up to do a camera track, but this is an object track. So if we click plus, we have a new object here that is highlighted. The reason we kept this shot on a tripod is to make this tracking a lot simpler. Otherwise, what you would have to do is first track the camera and then secondarily track the object with that camera tracking data already done. But to keep things simple, shoot it on a tripod and just add the object tracker here. And before we place our markers, there's a couple of settings we want to adjust over here. The first one is the type of motion that we're tracking. And there's a drop down here with a few different options. So location would just be a two dimensional uh, movement, location and rotation, and scale is kind of what you would get in After Effects perhaps. But because we have an object that is moving and the perspective is changing, we're gonna choose perspective. Sometimes if that perspective is not as extreme, you can choose a fine, which is close. The difference is that perspective can take a little bit longer to compute what's going on, but it's gonna give us a little better results here. The other thing we wanna turn on is normalize. And we're turning that on because if you look here, you'll see that sometimes the light hits our tracker markers um, and the color is changing a little bit. And normalize will look at not just the frame where you first set your marker, but it'll look at all the frames before and after. So as that color changes, it can kind of keep up with that color change. So first let's find a frame here in the shot where we can see pretty much everything evenly. It's looking like around here. And then just control click to add your first marker. Over here in this track tab, you can see what your tracker is seeing. We might wanna scale this up just a little bit to get more of the X. You can hit G to move this around, or you can just click and drag in this window here. I might wanna turn up the size here so that when I click, it's already scaled up a little bit bigger. You need eight tracker markers accurate throughout the entire shot. They don't have to be the same eight, but because we have all the track markers, um, all the X's in the footage itself, I'm just gonna add a mark on each one of these so that if some fail, it shouldn't be an issue. Okay, here we go with a tracker set up on all of these markers. So hit A to select them all. And then to track forward, there are a couple options down here. There is tracking forward by one frame, tracking forward all the way to the end of the shot, removing all tracking data to the right of the timeline or to the left. So let's just track forward all the way to the end of the shot. And then let's go back to this uh, frame here and then track to the beginning of the shot. And as you can see, we did lose some track markers and that's probably just because they kind of like fell off of the frame, but we have most of the, the track markers consistent. 
Uh, and we do have those data points here at the end. Um, but this is looking pretty good. So let's go to the Solve tab here on the left. And first, just click Solve Object Motion. Up here, we have a solve error. And that solve error is in pixels. So how many pixels off is our track? Ideally, we want it below 1. So it's less than 1 pixel off from the actual track. Somewhere around 0.5 and 0.3 is what you're aiming for. Let's say you wanted to put something directly on the book, or if you wanted to replace the book with another prop. Because we're doing a hologram, which is going to be floating above the surface of the book, and because holograms can't even have their own little shakiness or glitches, we do have a little bit more leeway in what our error could be. So if we're not getting something below 1, in this case, it's fine. But here's how you can refine your track to get a more accurate solve error. In the Cleanup tab here, click Clean Tracks. And let's find any of these trackers that have an error of, let's say, 10. If you hit Enter, a couple were highlighted. That means these two trackers have a 10 pixel error. So if we hit X and delete those, click Solve again, that dropped our solve error. So we can repeat this process until we get more and more accurate without losing too many of our trackers. We are at an error of 1.6. We could even get more accurate, but because those holograms are going to be floating off of the surface a little bit, this is going to give us a good enough solve for our needs today. So in the Solve tab, if you scroll down to the bottom, click Set Up Tracking Scene. And that's going to set up um, a camera, an object, and some motion tracking data. So if we go back to our layout view, um, we're going to see a camera here. And we're also going to see nothing else. So we have to turn on the visibility of our tracker markers. We can do that uh, here in the Viewport Overlays. Click on Motion Tracking. And then all of these track marks are going to be visible to us. We can also scale those up or down as needed. If we split our Viewport here and click on the Camera View, our shot is going to be a background image. So we can actually delete this ground and cube that was created uh, because we're going to add our own geometry to the scene. And if you look in the camera view, you can see that these empties in our scene are aligned with the tracker markers on the book. And if we look at these track marks, we can kind of see the surface of the book itself. So next thing we'll want to do is Shift A. Let's add a plane. We're going to create kind of like a reference of the cover of our book. So let's just move, rotate, and scale to line up roughly where the surface of the book is. And we can get this angle right by looking at these reference points. If you hit S and then hit X, Y, or Z twice, you can scale an object on its, on its local X, Y, and Z axis instead of the X, Y, and Z axis of your scene. And so this is at frame 158. And of course, if we move forward, it's all misaligned. If we Shift A, add an empty, usually we'll do a sphere. And let's kind of move this roughly where this book is. We can give this empty. And an empty is similar to a null object in After Effects. It's invisible. You can use it to parent other objects together, but it won't show up in any kind of render. We can apply all of our motion tracking information to the empty, and then parent anything else in our scene to that empty so we don't have to apply the same modifier again and again. So here in the Constraints tab, we're going to choose Object Solver because we did an object track. For Object, click Object, Camera, choose Camera, and hit Set Inverse. Now this empty moves along with our track. So if we go back to this frame and then parent 
with command P um, our kind of book reference to that empty. Suddenly our book cover will move with our track. Now, it doesn't align perfect, but that's okay because this is just a reference point. Also, because all of this tracking data is in this object solver, we can scale and move our camera so it's kind of closer to the center of our world here. And then now, let's say we have a mesh. Let's choose the monkey. If we had this kind of hovered over the book, We parent that to our empty. You can see all of our object tracking information has been applied. You did it! Thanks for joining me for that lesson. This was part of one of my classes on Skillshare. Join me for the full classes where we create an entire one minute sci-fi short film, step by step. Click on the link below. I can't wait to see you there. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, Feel free to like and subscribe to stay up to date on all of our latest videos.